In this video, we're going to talk about interpolation and extrapolation. These are two methods in order to approximate data within your data set and outside of it. Given a certain data set, interpolation tries to guess new points that are within your data set that you currently don't have values for. So for instance, let's say I had some coordinate system like this, so I have x's and y's, and I have some points of a point here, point here, I have a point here, here, and here. All right, so I have these five data points. What interpolation is trying to do is saying, I want to guess what is the y value at this certain x. So notice I don't have a y value for that x value. However, it's within my data set, so guessing what this new y value would be would be called interpolation. Extrapolation is similar to, to interpolation, except for the fact that instead of guessing data points that are inside of your data set, you're guessing stuff that's outside of it. So that's like me saying, what is the y value at this x point here? So notice that x point is not within my data set, so I have to guess outside of my data set, and that's called extrapolation. Two functions that help you with interpolation are interp1 and spline. Both, as you notice here, have the same inputs. However, the outputs that they produce are different based off of the mathematical functions and calculations that are happening within the functions themselves. So interp1, so let's say, so once again, let's say I had this data set here. Um, this, let's say one, two, three, four, two, three, four, let's say one, two, three, four, Okay, let's say I had a point there at 1, 1, let's say I had a point here at 2, 3, point here at 3, 2, and a point at 4, 4. Okay, so interp1, notice by its inputs, the first input are our x values, the second input are our y values, and our third input is the new x values that we want to guess upon. So in this case here, my x values will be a vector from one to four. So notice my points, the first x is one, the second one is two, the third is three, fourth is four. So I can just say one to four. And then my y's would be, so my first y is one, my second y is three, my third y is two, and my fourth y is four. So now I have my x values and my y values. And let's say that I wanted to guess what are my x values, or what are my y values for an x at, let's say 1.5, let's say 2.5, and let's also say at 3, okay? So in this case here, my new x's would be, first I want to guess 1.5, that's a 5, then I want 2.5, and then I want 3. Okay, and so the way that interp1 works, so by the way, that's a one, it's not an L, that's a common mistake people make. So the way interp1 works is by linear interpolation. So what I mean by linear interpolation is, what happens, let's get a new color. What happens is, so when it's guessing for 1.5 here, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the two values that are around 1.5. So we have this dot and we have this dot as well. And it's going to connect those with a straight line. So connects it with a straight line. And then in order to guess for the new y value, it's going to go up from the x to the intersection of that line and then go over to the intersection of the y-axis there. And so that's how it will guess mathematically what that new y point would be. So my drawing's probably very off, and I honestly don't know what the math would be in this. I guess I guess it would be halfway between one and three. So in this case here, um, interp one would produce back two. So it's just because my picture my picture is not exact. But let's see. There we go. So interp one in this case would guess two, and it's the same thing that happens for two point five as well. It will connect the dots around it with a straight line, and then it will go up from It'll go up from the 2.5 point all the way over and then go over to the y-axis. And that's where it'll guess the point at there as well. So this is doing linear interpolation. 
Okay, so in this case here, I, and so notice actually, so notice we're also guessing for the three, and we have the value for three, right? Three is already a data point that's already there. So when it goes up and it guesses that point, it'll just get the two, okay? So the two is already there, so it'll just guess that point. Um, so in this case here, my new Y's, what color is that? My new Y's would be something around two, um, 2.5 and two. Yeah, so it would be something like that. And it's doing a linear interpolation. The other way of doing interpolation is using the spline function. Spline is very similar in the sense that it takes in like a data set, the same type of thing, one, two, three, four. Oh, my pictures are beautiful. Three, four, two, three, four. Let's say I did the same exact points. Uh, two there, three was at two, and four was at four. Okay, and if I was guessing the same exact points, spline does not do linear interpolation. Instead, it does spline interpolation. You don't have to know the math that's going on behind the scenes. I don't even know the math that's going on behind the scenes. However, what you need to know is that spline does not really connect the dots with straight lines. Instead, it's connecting the dots with curves. So instead, it will kind of have a model, let's say, in between these two points that will be curved. Let's say it will be curved. Let's say it will be curved like that. Okay. So once it, it's not actually uh, creating this picture here. This picture is just a representation of the math that's happening. So therefore, if I wanted to guess what would be at 1.5, it does the same exact thing. It goes up to the intersection of that line. Do, 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 do. Then it goes over. Oh my gosh, my picture is beautiful. right? But here, since it's not doing linear interpolation, you might get a different value than you would have with interp1. Since the curve that it's being modeled by is not a straight line, you'll get a different approximation. However, the inputs are the same. It's just the outputs will be different based off of the method that you're using. The same two functions we use for interpolation, we also use for extrapolation. However, the way the interp1 works is a little different. So right now, let's say I had, let's say I had the same data set that I did before. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I don't, I don't really remember where I had these points. I think it was these. Yeah. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. So if I had these data points, and before we said that this was x was one to four, y was one, three, two, four. Now, extrapolation, once again, is guessing data that's outside of my domain or outside of my x values in this case here. So if I were to Let's say new x. Let's say I were to guess 1.5, and then let's say I were to guess 5. Okay. So right now, when I'm using, when I'm trying to guess for 1.5, that's using interpolation, right? That's inside of my data set. We talked about this in the last slide, where this will give me back 2. However, now I'm trying to guess what's my y value at 5 out here. And 5 is outside of my data set. And this is a problem. Interp1 is expecting to do interpolation. But now I'm trying to do extrapolation. So what happens is my new y in this case, the first point, it'll interpolate fine. 1.5, it'll give me back something around 2. But then now for that 5, it's like, hmm, I can't really interpolate on this. Um, so therefore, what it produces back is NAN. It doesn't error, it just produces back NAN. So if you try to extrapolate using interp1 without telling it to extrapolate, for the points that it tries to extrapolate on, it'll produce back NAN. All the other points, it'll interpolate on. So in order to explicitly tell the interp1 function, hey, I want you to also extrapolate on points, you have to use some additional inputs. So interp1, it still takes in new y, as its output and it has interp1 takes an x, y, new x. And then now there's actually additional inputs as well. So this fourth input 
is the method. This is telling you what type of method do you want to interpolate or extrapolate on. By default, it's linear. However, there's other options that I can put. So, and it has to be a string. So I can put linear, I can put cubic, I can put spline, right? and there's, there's other ones as well that you can look up on, doc, on the documentation to see how to do that. Um, but these are the main ones for the class. And so this is this is detailing, this is telling MATLAB what type of interpolation or what type of extrapolation do you want to use. And so that's the fourth input. And the fifth input, if you want to also extrapolate, you have to specifically tell the function to also do extrapolation. And you do that by, in this fifth input, by putting the string extrap. Now the function knows that, oh, you also want to do extrapolation. So now it won't produce back NANs. It will actually extrapolate on those values. It also interpolates still as well. So in order for the function to do extrapolation, you have to explicitly tell it in its fifth input to do extrapolation. And you have to include something on this fourth input as well. You have to specify what type of interpolation or extrapolation you want to do. Um, and then so spline, unlike interp1, spline is a great low maintenance function. It automatically does interpolation and extrapolation for you. So if some of your values are inside of the range and some of the values are outside of the range, it's cool. It does the um, respective computation for you. You don't have to have any additional inputs. So spline by itself automatically does extrapolation. And that's it. So you don't you don't have to know all the math that's going on behind the scenes in order to do extrapolation. You just have to know that these functions help you do it.